ओम श्री सैराम सो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न हाउ टू क्रिएट अ पजल गेम विद बेसिक पाइथन एंड टी के इंटर नॉलेज द एम ऑफ दिस गेम इज टू यूजिंग वेरी सिंपल कोड क्रिएट अ गेम विच रन्स लाइक दिस द एम हियर इन द गेम इज टू अरेंज ऑल द नंबर्स इन ऑर्डर लाइक अ बेसिक पजल गेम द यूजर हैज़ टू मूव द ब्लॉक्स इन अ मैनर सच दैट ऑल द नंबर्स आर इन द करेक्ट ऑर्डर एंड नॉट इन द जम्बल वन and after the game is over the user should also be presented with a choice whether he wants to play again or no so let's move on to learn how to make the game let's start off by importing all the modules in a separate file now we will create the basic window of the game here first main is equal to tk that's creating the window and then we are setting the size to the window 300 by 300 Let's put the title as puzzle, and then let's put the resizable values as false and false, so that the user cannot resize the window. For all this to happen, let's call the main loop. Let's run and see what happens. As you can see, there is a small window created on the screen. This is a good start. We know that the background is plain. Let's add a simple background at the back. So let's create the label to put at the background. and let's place it at the behind of the screen dot place x is 0 and y is also 0 height is 300 and width is also 300 so now when we run the game you can see that the background is covered with a black label so now let's move on to making the basics of the game that is creating the boxes on the screen for this let's imagine each box as a key in the dictionary so let's create a dictionary d final where this 0 1 2 3 4 all the keys of this dictionary represent the places of the box and the values will represent the text inside it in this d final dictionary all the values are in the correct order now let's go on to creating those boxes so let's create another dictionary d boxes let this be an empty dictionary what we need to do in this dictionary is we need to have all the key values here that show the position of the boxes but the values should be in the jumbled order this is because the user should begin with a jumbled order and move his way to make the correct order for adding the values to this dictionary let's create a function called move one now let's define the function such that in this function let l try be an empty list while the length of the list is lesser than 9 s is a variable and it's a random variable from 1 to 9 that's going to be appended to the list this l try is going to be a list with all random variables in it from 1 to 9 in a jumbled order for i in range 0 to 9 d boxes of i is going to be the corresponding value from the list let's print d boxes so that we know that it has the jumbled order of all the values as we can see in the output the first is 8 second is 6 third is 2 so it has all the jumbled elements in it we have a final list and a jumbled list but the screen has to be updated according to the jumbled list let's add the boxes onto a screen let's define another function called update screen so let's define the function here definition of update screen so for i in d boxes i will represent the key values of d boxes let's look into what happens in update screen so for i in d boxes i will represent the key values of the dictionary if i is lesser than 3 that is if i is 0 1 or 2 that will represent the top row of our grid let box be another label such that our text is going to be d boxes of i as we can see down here in the previous scenario 0 was 8 so the text of the label should be 8 here similarly if i is lesser than 6 that is if it is 3 4 and 5 it will define the box in such a way for the bottom row too here the trick is how do we place the boxes so in the first row the value of y is going to be 0 but the value of x has to be 0 100 and 200 how do we do it we are given the values of i as 0 1 and 2 if we are given 0 what is 0 mod 3 it's going to be 0 so 0 into 100 is 0 so we are going to get the value of x as 0 similarly if it is 1 we will get the value 100 if the value is 2 we'll get 200 with this equation we can actually place all our boxes but if you remember the game we need one empty box through which the user can shuffle all the other boxes and play his game 
let's go to our dictionary and in the dictionary whichever key has the value 9 that box is going to have a empty background by doing just this much we'll get a grid with numbers in a jumbled order but we actually need an empty box so that the user can shuffle through it and play his game for that the box with the text 9 let's have that as an empty box with the background yellow color you can see that I have defined a function check and have called it after every condition when we define check we are actually passing two arguments in it the value of x and y if i is lesser than 3 the value of i is going to be 0 1 or 2 and the value of y is going to be 0 this i represents the value of x the x1 here so in this function check if the value of d boxes is 9 box will be a label whose background is going to be yellow color and then the height is 98 width is 98 and the y value is y1 and x is x1 mod 3 into 100 at this point let's run the program and see what our progress right now is you can see we got a grid and since our height and width of the boxes were 98 and not 100 we have that black background giving the effect of borders to it we have this yellow box and all the numbers are in a jumbled order the user actually has to shuffle through these to get to the correct order now let's work through the buttons aspect of this we don't want actual buttons to be there on the window we want the user to play the game with the arrows on the keyboard so now let's bind some arrows to the game we have binded four buttons up down right and left we are going to define these commands we'll start by defining up here here s1 is going to be zero and we have to deal with the empty box and the boxes around it so for i in d boxes if d boxes of i is equal to 9 s1 is i here we get the key of the box that has the value 9 because 9 represents the empty box if s1 is lesser than 6 s1 has to be lesser than 6 this is because if the value of s1 is either 6 7 or 8 that means the empty box is in the last row and by up what we want is the box under the empty box should come up but if the empty box is in the last row there is no box under it to actually replace it so we'll execute this command up only if s1 is lesser than 6 if s1 is lesser than 6 d boxes of s1 is equal to d boxes of s1 plus 3 here s1 is the empty box and d boxes of s1 plus 3 will give you the box under it now suppose s1 is 0 that means it's going to be the cornermost box top left corner the box just under it will get the value of s1 and s1 will get the text value now let's try this function up here when i press the button up the value 7 was actually below it but it came up and the empty box went down now let's move on to define the others down right and left so now coming to down here we have the same thing s1 is 0 s1 is assigned the key whose value is 9 here if s1 is greater than 2 the empty box should not be in the top row then this function will take place now similarly for right the box just adjacent to it and the left the opposite way so let's run this and check if it's working now i'm pressing right and then 4 and the empty box got exchanged now we have reached a stage where we have created the window and then shuffled up the values and we have also created the grid and also able to move the boxes now what's left is to check if the user has actually arranged all the numbers in the correct order for this let's define a function check after every move so that it checks whether the user has completed the game or no now let's define the function check if you recall we have one dictionary d final that actually represents the correct order of the boxes and we are working with a dictionary d boxes in the condition of check if d boxes is equal to d final game is over because it means that the user has actually arranged the boxes in the correct order so after the game is over let's create another screen let's name it screen 2 and let's put an image as a background let's import an image one important thing to remember here is that the image has to be in the same folder where the project is placed here i have an image already with me and the name of the image is image1.jpeg in this program i'm naming it img1 that is image1 
and I've resized it to 300 by 300. This is because our window size is 300 by 300. So this screen 2 is a label with the image, image 1. Let's place it at x is 0 and y is 0. And let's have another label title, which is another label that's going to have the text, do you want to play again? After the user actually finishes the game, there's going to be a screen coming up and it's going to have the title of, do you want to play again? It's going to have two buttons, yes or no. So if the user clicks yes, the game has to start all over again. If he clicks no, the window has to be destroyed and the game will end. So here we ask the question, do you want to play again? And I have put the font as 20. The foreground is white, that is the color of the text. And the image is again image 1. And we are compounding it to the center. And then I have put the place as y is 50 and x is 25. And height is 50 and width is 250. And then this option 1 is the button which will have the text yes. And then the command is going to be move 1. So this is because if the user clicks yes, that means the game has to start all over again. Now if you recall, we started the game by actually defining move 1. Because in move 1 we get a jumbled dictionary which will have jumbled values. So that's how the game actually starts. The command of the button yes is going to be move 1. And this option 2 is second button which will have the text no. And the command is going to be main.destroy. So our window is going to get destroyed and the game will end. And I have placed it at these places. So now let's try and see after the user finishes the game whether this works or no. As you can see, I am stuck here. For making it more comfortable for the user, let's bind another key from the keyboard to the game. That's going to be R. So what's the function of this R? The function of R is to reload the game. Let's bind another key, main dot bind R. And let's have the function as reload. Let's define reload over here. Reload means the game has to start all over again. So again, we'll call move one over here. Now when I press R, the game is shuffling again. This is because we are calling move one and move one shuffles the dictionary all over again. Let me try to finish the game here. In the next move, the game is going to get over. So we get another screen here. Do you want to play again? Now if I press yes, I get the game again. If I were to press no, the game would end. So this is the game right here with basic Python and TK inter knowledge and the link to the source code is in the description. But remember to edit the code for the image here. If you want, we can also remove the image and in screen 2, instead of an image, we can always have a background with any color like black, purple or any color of your choice. If you are really interested and work little more on the game, you can also create an advanced version of the game like this where you have an interactive screen at the first where the user is given choice. So here we have numbers puzzle or Swami's puzzle. So if I click on the numbers puzzle, here I have two options that is to reload and one is to go back to the main screen. And if you notice, the game is also 4x4 four four grid. So now there are going to be 16 blocks in total. So even in this puzzle, we have all the same functions like the previous one but we have just made it more interactive and at the end here too we get a choice whether the user wants to play again or no. Thank you for watching the video. Hope you like it. Have a good day.